Yo! Welcome back to One More Mana. My name is Derek, and today I'm so excited to get into Commander 2019. The decks look awesome this year. They really do. I, for one, I know a lot of people were critical of the decks last year, but I'm really excited about the decks as a whole and the new commanders. A lot of them look so cool. And over the course of the next couple of weeks, I'll be going over a lot of just my favorite commanders from it, as well as kind of just going into deck upgrades. I know basically commander pre-cons are just such a perfect place for new players to get in commander. And there's a couple videos I do want to do kind of talking about taking a pre-con, adding a few cards just to make it a little bit stronger and kind of taking that next step of getting just past a pre-con. But for today, we're not just doing a pre-con upgrade. We are doing a full-on deck tech for probably my favorite new legend from the new commander products. She looks awesome and it's Atla Palani Nest Tender. Atla is one in Naya, so red, green, white, four. The, she, she's the mother of dinosaurs. <laughs> if Daenerys is the mother of dragons, I think she's the mother of dinosaurs, and she looks awesome. It, this card got me really excited from the first time I read it, and okay, I'll just get into it. I won't, I won't go off too much about how excited I'm just talk about it. So Atla, what she lets you do is you can pay two colorless mana, tap her to make a zero one egg. And then whenever any egg dies, not just the eggs she makes, or in this case, I guess, steals, she's not laying the eggs. I don't know how she's getting these eggs, but not just the eggs that she gets, but any egg. If any egg dies at all, you get to flip cards off the top of your library until you hit a creature and then just put it straight into play. This effect is so, so cool. Now, I already know there's going to be some ways to break this card. I guarantee there's going to be some builds where you can put in very few creatures and essentially just guarantee combo pieces every game. I feel like I say it every time. Good, you know, that's awesome. Again, I'm going to be dying to those decks and I'm going to enjoy doing it because this card is so cool. But that's not what I'm trying to do here. I feel like this deck just lets you pick all your favorite Naya fatties that are always too high a CMC to all put in the same deck. We all want to have Elish Norn and Blightsteel and Avacyn and, and Atali and Aurelia and all these crazy high CMC cards in the same deck, but usually it's just not feasible. Usually, you know, you could ramp super hard, but you need to have some sort of a curve. A curve is a thing. In this deck, we're not so worried about this. We want all of our creatures to be huge because every time we get that activation, we either want every creature in this deck to be an egg an egg enabler or just a big fatty that's going to smack someone because we want to be flipping and always hitting something awesome. Normally in Naya, I'm going to be running a lot of mana dorks and creatures that get me lands rather than this instance in sorceries because Naya likes creatures, but not in this deck. We don't want to be flipping cards off the top and hit a wood elves. Nothing against wood elves, but we don't want to be flipping, hit a land of war or something like that. We want to hit a big fatty every time. So essentially every creature we stuff in this deck is a big that is going to make a huge impact or just another egg and a way to just, you know, flip it over and over again, which is so cool. And with this type of effect, we'll need plenty of haste enablers. We want to be able to activate Atla as soon as possible. It, it almost reminds me of Krenko in a way where if you just bring her out and people see, oh, he's there about to get something, they might just kill her. You don't want to have to wait a full turn to get an activation. And in addition, not only do you need those haste enablers, you need sack outlets. Basically, I've been going over a lot trying to figure out the right number. I'm thinking anywhere between 5 and 10, either sack outlets or way to kill your own creatures because these eggs do need to die. So if someone tries to bounce it, and these are the tokens she makes, so if someone tries to bounce it, it's just gone. If someone tries to exile it, it's not dying. It needs to die. So we need destroy effects, sacrifice effects in order to make sure we're getting the triggers and throwing our fatties onto the battlefield. So looking, at, we're going to take a look at the creatures now. The first category I want to go over with these creatures is eggs. We need things that are either counting themselves as eggs, making other things eggs, or making eggs. Mirror Entity is the best example of this. It's a changeling itself, so it's an egg. And it can turn all your other creatures into eggs too. This works as the best board wipe protection possible. Obviously, Cyclonic Rift or an Exile All Creatures you're not going to benefit off of it, but any of the destroy all creatures, you just put a mana into this, turn all your creatures into eggs. All of a sudden, your whole battlefield just gets rebuilt out of nowhere. Nesting Dragon is another great example of, a, of an egg creator. <laughs> egg creator sounds kind of awkward. Um, I don't know. It's the next example of an egg producer. I like that. That sounds more official. It's an egg producer. A Nesting Dragon, every time a land enters, you get another egg. And with this type of deck where you have a lot of Instant and sorcery based ramp, a lot of lands will be coming into play. 
And with all these lands coming into play, you'll be getting lots of eggs and lots of opportunities to be getting these big creatures out. So when we're looking at the creatures, not only do we want more eggs to be able to get activations, but really we want to be able to tap our commander more times. The more we're able to tap the commander, we can just produce eggs with the commander, which is kind of the ideal way to do it. We don't want to be spending creature slots on eggs because, I mean, it's not bad. You, you kill an egg and you just get another egg. We'd rather be getting something huge and scary. So we should stick, you know, to a lot of the egg production. Still sounds so weird. It's going to be coming from Adler herself. So the best way to do this is with untap effects. So Samut Voice of Descent does a great job of this. Not only does she give everything haste, which we already want, but she's going to allow you to untap your commander, which is awesome. And I said the word untap. You already know what's coming next. Seaborn Muse is going to do just a phenomenal job. Seaborn Muse is an awesome card. This is going to give us, basically, we can just make an egg every turn with Seaborn Muse and like almost any deck Seedborn uses in, if it sticks around for too long, you're just going to win the game with the value it gets you. Now, outside of those creatures, really, it's whatever you want. This is the best part about this deck for me is it doesn't matter what huge creatures you throw in. Throw in whatever you want. Now, there's a few that I'm going to point out. I'm just going to pick my three favorite creatures for this deck that I just think are so awesome in so many ways. But that's the best thing about it. It doesn't matter. Just pick whatever your favorite cards are and just throw them in. And not many decks are going to allow you to just have that much freedom and still be able to synergize with what you want to do. So this is probably my favorite thing about it. So again, I'm going to pick my three favorites, but check out the deck list because it's a bunch of awesome cards. But again, put whatever you like. It doesn't matter how big, how dumb, or how ridiculously high the CMC is. If you like it, you put it in. First one I'm going to talk about is Blightsteel. This should be no surprise. It is the just the, the godfather of Infect, the most beautiful piece of Phyrexian perfection. No offense, Skittles. And it's, it, this is a deck that's perfect for it. You literally just get to play it for free. The next one I'm going to talk about is Atali. Atali is, a, it synergizes with everything you're doing. Because you want to cheat mana cost. And the thing is, we have a lot of top deck manipulation that we're going to get into in a little bit. Because we want to know what's on the top of our deck. We want to make sure we get the exact fatty that we want at the exact moment. So we are able to basically stack our deck in a certain way. And Itali just happens to benefit off of that. On top of just being a 6-6 six, six creature. Swinging at people and getting to cast everyone else's stuff. The last one I want to talk about is Elish Norn. I really don't get to talk about this card much. Because I really don't put white in many decks. But Elish Norn is just such an awesome card. It's essentially... A mini board wipe for your opponents. It buffs all your creatures. But one of the coolest things that this does is that that, that state-based effect where everything's permanently minus two, minus two, it can shut so many decks down. And in a deck like this where you're just playing huge creatures, it's not as focused on interruption. It's not as focused about stopping your opponents from doing stuff. You just want to be such a big threat where they just basically are focused on dealing with you. But Elish Norn is a great balance, big anthem effect. It's a 4-7 Vigilance, it's not really what it's used for, but that negative 2, negative 2 to your opponent's boards can shut down so many strategies, and if they're even trying to play a token deck, they, they just can't do anything about it, and in a deck where you're worried about fatties, you can be scared if someone makes 100 tokens, but those tokens won't even exist if Elish Norn is on the battlefield. Looking at the instance, Sunder and Growth is a really cool card. It's, it's, it's artifact enchantment removal, but that populate to get an extra egg whenever you need it is just perfect. And the other one... This card is just, it's an amazing card in every deck, but it's even better in this, and it is Worldly Tutor. Worldly Tutor lets you just pick whatever creature you want, put it on top of your library, kill the egg, and just put whatever that big fatty that you just picked into play. Get that Blightsteel, slap it on the battlefield, and get ready to slap somebody with the Blightsteel. And looking at the sorceries, you want to play sorcery-based ramp. I mentioned this earlier, more so than almost any other type of deck, you don't want to have your ramp coming from creatures. You don't want little creatures ramping you because too many times we try to manipulate the top of our deck, but we can't always do it. And we don't want to be, especially late game, flipping into a mana dork. If that is what we kill our egg to get, it's just not worth it. So we want all our ramp from sorceries. We have to ramp. The deck's high CMC. It's really, I don't want to say dependent on the commander, but run. it, it needs the commander to run efficiently. And if it dies, you need to be able to have the mana in play to be able to get the engine going. But we're going to want this through non-creature spells, and this is where the bulk of them are. Austere Command is also awesome. It's the perfect board wipe for us, because we can kill everything CMC 3 or less. We are not worried at all about any creature CMC 3 or less. And thankfully, 
our commander is 4 CMC. So this is similar to LH Norn. All those decks with all the weenies and all the little dudes running around, this does a great job of just wiping them all off the battlefield while still leaving all your stuff safe. Looking at the enchantments, first two I'm gonna look at are Anointed Procession and Parallel Lives. Now if you really want, you could even throw a doubling season in there for more, but we wanna double our egg tokens. This makes it for one activation of our commander, getting double the amount of egg tokens is awesome. It's just, it's basically a just more efficient way, especially if we have a sack outlet on board. That's one activation, getting two fatties onto the battlefield. That's awesome. And the other enchantment I want to talk about is Lurking Predators. It's essentially like a really inefficient version of your commander already. Whenever your opponents cast spells, you just flip the top card of your library. If it's a creature, it's coming into the battlefield. If not, you can scry it away. This is so, so good for us, and it just is perfect in a situation where maybe your commander's died a couple times. Maybe you don't feel like spending all the mana on that, or you want double the goodness. If you already have your top deck manipulation out, and you can kind of stack it to where, okay, my commander's out, I'll kill an egg, get a huge creature. But if you got lurking predators out, every cast of your opponent's spells, you're getting to flip stuff. Half the time, the, the manipulation doesn't even matter. You're flipping over so many cards, eventually you're going to hit something huge and game-changing. Looking at the artifacts, we're running Thousand Year Elixir, we're running Mage Rite Stone, we're running Thornbite Staff, all these types of artifacts that help you untap your creatures. Because again, we want to maximize activations. We're able to ramp a lot. So with these, we can put some mana in, untap, be able to tap again, just basically maximize our egg production. Skull Clamp might be the best card in the deck. Skull Clamp is ridiculous because it's going to kill our little 01 eggs that are being made by our commander. Let us draw two cards and flip over things until we hit huge creatures. Now this can be dangerous. We do have the top deck manipulation and with this deck we really don't want as much card draw as most decks do because we want the things on top of our library. We don't want those big creatures in our hands. And while card draw isn't a focus of the deck, you still need to have it in certain situations. And Skull Clamp does a great job of still letting you flip for value, getting huge creatures, but also being able to get certain other cards you need in your hand because Despite the huge presence of just massive scary creatures, there's some other cards sometimes you do need to cast from hand. The last artifact I'm going to talk about is Birthing Bows. This is an interesting one. It's basically four mana to create, and for us an egg is a changeling. So it's a, like a, a less efficient version of our commander essentially, but again we want the repetitive effects. Or if we don't have an untapper, this is just sec basically a second version of that to get more eggs on the battlefield. It, it's not the most efficient, and to be honest, there's probably better ways to do it, but I love having the redundancies to make sure. Again, I, like I just said, we don't actually have a ton of card draw in this deck, so we want redundant effects to make sure we get what we need so we can flip those huge creatures out. Looking at the land base, it's a pretty basic not a land base. First one I'm going to point out is Sun Home, Fortress of the Legion. Get something double strike. We got so many big... And a lot of trampling creatures in this deck. Well, given something to, again, I'm going to talk about this creature a lot, but a blight steal, a double striking blight steal, I think they're killing someone or they got to waste their entire board to block it. And it's at that point, you know what? If they want to do that, it's, it's the satisfaction of getting to swing with at that point 22 trampling infect. Doesn't even matter if it gets through, I feel good either way. Kessig Wolf runs a really similar effect. We're going to be able to ramp, like I said, and we don't always need to spend mana to cast our big creatures. This is a great way to just spend that mana, make a creature even bigger, and you can even give it trample. You know, Blightsteel's already got trample. You know what? Let's give our Atali trample and make it even bigger and scarier then. And on top of that, we got Flamekin, Village, and Handwire Battlements. They're going to go ahead and they just act as extra haste enablers. And having haste enablers, even in our land slots, is amazing. They're probably going to stick around, and it's a great way to make sure our commander is always going to be able to, you know, get tapped. That sounds funny. It's a great way to make sure your commander is always going to have haste so you can get that tap effect right away every time. That's going to finish it up for the card categories. Now we're getting into the best part, as always. It's how to win the game and how are we winning the game and in this deck, the most big, stompy, and fun ways possible. So the first way to win the game is a little card called Warstorm Surge. <sighs> Just to take a wild guess at what card I'm going to talk about in combination with this. I don't... It, if you haven't been listening, if you don't already know, it is Blight Steel. You get Warstorm Surge out, you flip out a Blight Steel, you just pick who dies, because that Blight Steel is throwing 11 Infect at someone's face. And not just Blight Steel, there's so many big creatures, Warstorm Surge can just get out of hand super fast, just smacking everyone in the face essentially, just dealing that damage every time one enters the battlefield. 
Speaking of infecting people out, this is a, just a weekly thing at this point. I think I mention it literally every week. It's Triumph of the Hordes, and Triumph of the Hordes is in this because we have such big creatures. Getting 10 infect through is not hard at all. We, we got the Blight Steel there. We got this Triumph of the Hordes. It's just literally just we're basically making little baby Blight Steels because we have so many huge power creatures. We're giving them Trample. We're giving them infect. And it's another way just to out of nowhere take somebody out. That Warstorm Surge, you play that Activate Commander, hit a Blight Steel, someone's just gone and they might not have seen it coming. Triumph of the Horse has that same effect where it comes out of nowhere. I mean, you're probably sick of hearing me talk about it at this point. But if you're not playing it, then you're not listening. Go ahead and play it and you'll see why I talk about it so much. This next way to win the game is not something I'm going to encourage you try to do in the deck much. Because to me it ruins the spirit of the deck. This deck is all about big, dumb, fun magic. But there is a way to combo off and kill everybody, and that's going to be with Thornbite Staff, your commander, and Ashnod's Altar. You've probably heard this combo before, if, if people have been referring to Atla and talking about basically how she could just literally how it'll work is Thornbite Staff is automatically going to go on your commander. You can tap your commander to make an egg. You can then stack that egg to Ashnod's Altar. The creature dies, so you untap and have two floating mana to just go ahead and do it again and again. And again and again. And what this turns into is just every creature in your deck just slapped onto the battlefield. And like I said before, I wouldn't try to do this every time because to me the whole fun is randomly flipping things, seeing what crazy creature you're going to hit. And while there is top deck manipulation, there's only so much. So there still is that, you know, that element of fun and randomness. But there are those games that just go on for way too long. Or there are those times where, you know what? Someone got you salty. They tarted you last game and you know what you're going to do to them? You're going to go ahead and just dump your library through every creature with ways to give them haste and just smack somebody in the face. And speaking of that haste, we are running Samoot. So if you do flip every creature, everything's going to have haste and you're going to be swinging out. So while I normally don't encourage or normally I don't throw in combo wins, if the combo involves a bunch of just fat Naya creatures and dinosaurs and blight steel, I guess I can't be that mad at it. So that's going to do it for this week's Deck Tech. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope you guys like Atla. Like I said, the flexibility. There's 25 creature slots, essentially how I built the deck. You just put in whatever makes you happy, and that's really what Commander is all about. So please let me know what y'all think. What cards do you want to put in there? This deck can be built a whole lot cheaper than I built it. I just happen to pick my favorite cards that I have. But you can put in a whole bunch of just big, scary budget creatures. And a lot of the time it's going to work just as good and you're going to have just as much fun. So definitely let me know if there's some other builds that you guys have made. Definitely excited to hear about that. As always, thank you so much to all the patrons. We really do appreciate and love y'all so much. And like I said, you're getting to be getting a little extra this week. Very soon there's going to be another video coming looking at specifically one of the pre-cons. And like I said, different ways to upgrade it. So get excited. You're going to have a whole lot of C19 coming your way. But until then, I will see you guys next time.